Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to get data from Excel into SharePoint. As you see, I have a list here of data with staff from the Contoso company. And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to import this into SharePoint. And the first thing that you need to remember to do is to format the list here as a table. It doesn't matter which one you choose, just choose one that looks interesting to you. And of course, the table functionality in Excel is a whole demonstration by itself and has a lot of functionality. But in this case, I'm just going to go for the one thing, the export feature here, the export table to SharePoint list, which is exactly what I want to do. And I'm going to just type the URL here, which is sharepointcontoso.com. And I'm going to create um, a list when the name of that list is going to be staff next and as you see now it's creating columns for each and every one of these columns that I have in Excel and then I'm just gonna click next uh, there are no options in Excel to modify which fields are being created and that's where I'm gonna do the other type of import shortly all right so now that has been created so let's go into that and now that's under site contents of course and here I have my list now the staff list 272 items so here's all my data and as you see, there are several problems with this list. For one thing, all the um, fields are text fields. Uh, for example, the department shouldn't be a text field. Another big issue here is that the view is not good at all. So I'm going to modify the view and remove most of the fields because I don't want to see everything. Just a simple phone list would be nice enough. First name, last name, email. I don't need to see this um, work phone could be good, actually department is good too and then we can just remove the rest of it here making a much more readable list also I want to show the edit field I think that's much more useful than the type icon since all of these have the same icon I don't really care to see that over and over again it doesn't really serve any purpose but the edit button does so I'm going to put that at the top and remove the type icon I'm going to click OK and as you see now that's much much better but I'm also going to create a new one here because this one goes straight into the uh, quick edit mode and I don't actually like that my users get straight into that and there are some connecting lists and stuff like that that doesn't work with when you're in quick edit mode so I'm going to create another view I'm going to base that on all items but I'm, it's going to be a standard view I'm going to call that all staff or something and make that the default one and it chooses the same list so that's fine all staff all items okay then I can just go in and change the one the, the one that's called all items and call that edit mode or something like that making it very simple anyhow so that's the first way of getting data into SharePoint from Excel there's actually a much much better one and I'm gonna show you that one now I'm gonna go into site contents and actually create a contact list. I'm going to call that one staff2. And as you see now that has a lot of built-in fields. Some of those I'm going to use and some I'm not going to use. So let's go in and actually modify this first. Let's remove some of them. All of these are from the same company so I don't need the company field here. I'm going to delete that. I'm also going to change the notes field here and make sure that that is plain text. So I want to import into that and when I'm importing with access which is the second thing I'm going to do here uh, it works much much better with plain text and then I'm also going to go into the advanced settings of my list and remove the attached files I'm going to say that those are not enabled for my task list and finally I'm going to add a new column actually I'm going to add two columns I'm going to add one from the existing columns and that's the contact photo contact photo there and click OK and then I'm gonna upload all of the pictures of these people I have an, a list of those so I'm gonna upload those to picture library staff pictures and in the staff pictures I'm gonna upload all the files and to do that really quick I'm gonna open with Explorer and put that as a favorite there add current location to favorite staff pictures and I'm going to go into my picture library where I have all the pictures here and I'm going to drag those in 
that's going to take a few seconds or 272 items so while that's uploading we can go back here and see that we actually get some nice thumbnails of the people here and now the I can copy the shortcut to one of those pictures and we'll see what that is I'll go into notepad and see what the link is it's actually a not the one I wanted but let's go into one of those double click the picture and there we have a be better URL to the picture as we see the link to each and every picture now is um, this one right so in the Excel spreadsheet now I want to make sure that the link actually is correct there picture now it's picture uh, just the images uh, around but I'm gonna replace all of those links so it's gonna do a find and replace and replace it with all that and I'm gonna replace images backslash with all that replace all right much much better close and now I'm gonna save this now the key to getting this uh, list here there we go staff 2 to be filled with all the data is using Microsoft Access. But there's one more step I want to do though. As you see, if I create a new item here, there's no information about department. So I want to create a department. But of course, I don't want the department to be a text field. I want it to be a drop down. And there are a lot of different options. There are no less than four different options for creating a drop down in SharePoint. And they each have their benefits and problems. But the one I'm going to be using now is the choice one because that one works excellently with um, search which I'm going to be showing in another demonstration. So I'm going to go into site settings and create a new site column and I'm going to call that Contoso department and that's going to be a choice and now of course I need to put that into a new group called Contoso columns and then I want to type in each of the choices. Now to find all the unique choices here in this Excel table I'm going to just place my cursor anywhere in this table and on the table tools here, I'll summarize this with a pivot table and that creates a new sheet. And then I can take the department field and put that on the rows. And here I have all my unique row labels and all the departments. So then I can just copy that and paste it into the column here. Nice, and they're also alphabetical, so that is just great. And I don't want to have a default choice there, a default value, so that does it. Now, then I'm going to go into the staff 2 list and add the existing column to that list. Add from existing site columns. And of course, I'm going to select the one I used there, Contoso Department, and then click OK. Now, let's go into the actual importing. And let's do that by going into the list and opening that list with Access. And that creates a new desktop database called Staff 2. I'm going to link to that. And of course I need to log in again because it's another security context here. And now it's opening that in Access. And as you see I have the staff there. And um, I can open that up and it's empty of course. The next thing to do now is to get the Excel list in here. I don't want to save this to SharePoint site. Copy and paste would be the first option of course and that does work but a much much better one is to actually link to the external data. Let's make sure I save this now. I don't actually want this anymore, so I can remove that. I'm going to save this now, and then go into Access again, and then link to an Excel file, important link, and then I'm going to link to the data source, and find the Contoso staff XLS file, which I have here. Next. First row con uh, contains column headings. Beautiful. Next and then the Excel stuff. That's what, it's, what it contains, right? So I'm gonna finish that, and it's done. So now I have an Excel staff table here, which is linked to Excel, and I have a staff too, which is linked to the SharePoint site. So the next thing to do, I don't need that one now, is to create a query. I'm gonna go into Query Design. I'm gonna show the Excel list there, and then I'm going to append to the existing SharePoint list, the staff2 table, of course. And then it's just a matter of selecting all the fields. The name should go into the full name field. The first name should go into the first name field. 
last name, last name field, and so on. Work email, email address. All right, let's just move through these really fast. I'll put third in by the magic of video recording here. I am did a couple of more here so you didn't have to watch all that and bore, get bored. As you notice, I'm adding department about me and picture also to this, and that's all I want. That's another option that Access, of course, gives you. You can also do transforms of the data using all the powers of this Access query tool. Really, really powerful. So anyhow, now that I'm done with this query, which is, of course, underneath an SQL qu query, which does all that, then I can simply run it by clicking on Run here. And that's now going to update all the, or actually append all the rows from the Excel list into the SharePoint list. So I'm running the query now, and that's updating rows, and it's rather quick. And I'm going to go into the contacts list here and refresh. And here you see there's the whole gang with all the data filled in that I imported. Let's just open one of these and we'll see that I actually filled in the About Me field also. So it looks rather good, right? That uh, is, of course, a much more powerful way to import the data into SharePoint from Excel. So I'm going to do another demo based on this next, which is how I can actually search these people. But that's the next demo. And thank you for watching this one.